Hey everyone, it's Dr. Russell. It's been a little bit of time since my last uh, few videos, so I think I'm finally at a place where I can do them more regularly, so I'm excited to get back on track with things. Um, and I, you know, spent a lot of time thinking about what would be important to talk about. You know, we've got a lot going on in the world right now, so, you know, I was trying to figure out what would be the most beneficial for everyone and, and thinking, you know, this is early October, we have a, a pretty heated election coming up in less than a month. We still are in a pandemic as of right now um, with, you know, no real end in sight. Um, you know, we don't know when things will go back to normal and what that's even going to look like going forward. So there's just a lot of uncertainty and a lot of um, anxiety in the air. And I've been seeing that definitely a lot with patients. Um, you know, it's definitely been increased over the last what, six months since the pandemic started. So I, I thought talking about anxiety would be really useful. So I wanna spend the next four weeks during all of October just doing a different video about different um, aspects of anxiety and different things we can do to help with anxiety. So for this first video, I wanted to touch on some supplements. Uh, I did do a video, I think about a year ago, and I talked about some top three things for anxiety, but I wanna break that down further and go into more detail. So this week, I'm gonna talk about a few supplements. Next week, I'm gonna talk about some herbs. Love my herbs. And then uh, week three, I'm gonna talk about some different lifestyle things you can do to help with anxiety. And then the last week, I'm going to talk about some other considerations around anxiety, like nutrition, um, other things like that that can be looked at. So, so for this week, to get started, I want to talk about my top three supplements for anxiety. And these are in no particular order, so I don't find one to be better than the other. It just kind of depends on what's going on for each individual. So the first um, anxiety supplement is magnesium. And probably most of you are familiar with magnesium. It's a common mineral. Um, but what you might not know is that magnesium is most likely thought to be deficient in most people. And um, it could be we're just not getting enough in our food. You know, our soils are very depleted and they have been because of the way farming practices have been. So we're not maybe getting as enough magnesium in the soil that's coming into our food. Um, and something else is a lot of common drugs actually deplete magnesium. So things like birth control and diuretics and things like that can really have an impact on depleting magnesium. So it's kind of this perfect storm of things causing magnesium to be deficient. Um, I mean, magnesium definitely has been shown to help with anxiety. Um, you know, magnesium is involved in 300 plus chemical reactions. So it has a lot of impacts on different aspects of the body. So when it comes to taking magnesium, you know, there's several different forms. There's oxide, citrate, glycinate, uh, magnesium, um, chelate, I think I've seen. There's, um, you know, taurate, threonate. There's like every single different form of magnesium you can find probably out there. Oxide is probably the most common. It's the cheapest to make. Um, so you probably will see that a lot in different supplements. I personally like to use glycinate for most people um, just because it tends to be as effective as some of the other ones, but it has less GI side effects. So sometimes people can have kind of GI upset and diarrhea from magnesium. Um, so that's just one I like, but they do have some as powders and capsules. So you can kind of find a form that works for you. Um, dosing can be anywhere from 100 milligrams up to, you know, 800 milligrams a day just really depends. Um, and if there are any GI side effects, sometimes you can, you know, divide up the dose or, um, you know, just take a little less so it doesn't cause that. So, you know, there's kind of a lot of variability with that. And you want to make sure there are a couple of medications that it can interact with. So definitely talk to your doctor before starting that. Um, but magnesium is really great for anxiety. And, you know, you can take it at night if you, maybe your anxiety affects your sleep or in the day if it just affects your work day. So, you know, kind of play around with that and see if that helps. But yeah, magnesium, simple, easy to use. Um, and then for another supplement for anxiety is can kind of be related to food with fish oil or really specifically omega-3s, those fatty acids. So as Americans, we tend to be very high in those omega-6 or more pro-inflammatory 
type oils um, or fatty acids, excuse me, whereas omega-3s, you know, we need some of those and we don't get them in the right ratios to balance out those omega-6s. Omega-3s, again, they're anti-inflammatory, so really beneficial for many health conditions, but there have been a few studies showing omega-3s, um, you know, especially EPA and DHA, those are the active forms. So you want to make sure if you get a fish oil supplement or omega-3 supplement has both those forms in there, so they kind of work harmoniously together. Um, and especially I've seen, you know, in certain brands where they just say omega-3 and they don't even explicitly tell you how much is EPA and DHA. So those would not be good to use. You want to make sure it's it's telling you exactly how much of each of those are in there. Um, but there was a study actually that was done on medical students and um, they took about 2.5 grams total of EPA and DHA. It was very high EPA around 2,000 uh, milligrams or 2 grams and then some of the DHA. But they found they had a 20% reduction in their anxiety symptoms just from taking the fish oil so versus placebo so that's that's pretty significant you know 20 percent would take you from you know like an eight to a six on the anxiety scale or something like that so you know and it has again other benefits as well um, something else with the omega-3 you just want to consider is, again, most commonly it's going to be in fish oil. Um, make sure the company you're getting uses small fish like sardines or anchovies. If it's using larger fish, we worry about the possibility of mercury contamination in there. So, you know, and they should be doing some testing regularly to make sure they don't have a lot of mercury in their product, if any. Um, so I like... You know, I have no affiliation, but I love Nordic Naturals just because I know I can trust them and they use those small fish. So that would be a good option. So, so fish oil, omega-3 has been shown to be beneficial for anxiety. Um, and then for number three, which has been probably my most used recently, just because it's good for so many things, is inositol. And inositol is considered B8. Um, it actually is a little bit different than a, a true vitamin. It's really similar in structure to glucose, our blood sugar. Um, but inositol, um, and the most common form of inositol that we talk about is myo, M-Y-O inositol. That's what a lot of the research has been done, and that's what's most common in our bodies. Um, there is dechiro inositol, but it's found very um, small amounts in our body, so it doesn't have the same kind of effect um, as far as uh, the amount of it that we find. But inositol has been shown to help reduce anxiety, help other mood behavior disorders, um, so it, it really can be beneficial, and it, it typically has a very um, quick acting effect, so it's not though you know, as though with some of these other things, you gotta wait a little bit for it to, to help. So it, it works pretty, I find pretty quickly. Um, it usually comes in a powdered form and you can start with four grams. There is research and literature showing people taking as much as 18. Um, so you kind of have to find that sweet spot for you. Um, same with magnesium, there can be, though I would say it's not that common um, to have some GI side effects from it. So same thing, you just don't want to take too much. If you find that to happen, just lower your dose. Um, and again, same with magnesium. You can take it at night if you feel like it's causing more anxiety at night, or you can take it during the day if it's, you know, more anxiety during the day. Um, so, you know, I like that. It's good also for ovary health and ovary function. So I use it a lot for women um, with period issues, fertility, things like that. So it's got that other side benefit. But it's really, really useful for anxiety and kind of calming the mood, especially if there's a OCD component to it, you know, or just you feel like your thoughts get stuck and you ruminate. It can be really helpful. So hopefully that was useful. So again, we've got magnesium, which is a very common nutrient deficiency, fish oil, which again, most of us are getting those omega-6s and not omega-3s, and then inositol, which might be a B vitamin you never heard of. It's not really quite a vitamin, but that's okay. Um, you know, vitamin D is not really a vitamin either, either so that's all right. <laughs> um, so hopefully some of those you can try and be helpful. I'd love to hear your experience if you've used any of those. Um, and it's good to be back talking about some of these things. So, so hopefully it can give you some calm in this craziness that we're calling 2020. Uh, so I will be back next week with talking about my favorite herbs for uh, anxiety because herbs are wonderful. So I hope you all have a great rest of your week and I will see you next week.